Hey there, I'm Bogdan Budaka and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another mind workout. I hope that you're staying indoors and that you keep safe and you keep learning. Today we will go over another cool little problem. We will be using the C programming language. And of course, whenever you feel that you can continue on your own, please pause the video and do so. I also have a new setup, so I'm hoping that the audio and video will be a bit better. So yeah, let's uh, dig right in. So what we'll be doing today is reverse an integer. So we've uh, reversed a string before, now we will reverse an integer. So let's spell that out, reverse an integer. So think about how we can proceed to get this done. For example, let's have a number 123. How can we proceed to reverse this number? So maybe, for example, if we get the last digit from the number and add it to a new number as the first digit and then get the second digit from the actually the second to last digit from the input number and then move it as the second digit to the new number and so on. So if that sounds good, how can we get the last digit from the number? If you had a chance to check out the previous video and I will link to it, uh, we used the little trick, let's call it, to get the last digit from a number. So in order to do that, we can use the modulo operation in modulo 10. Okay, so what's the modulo operation? You can also look that up online, of course. Very interesting. Basically, the modulo operation gives us the remainder from a division. Okay, so just a small example. 5 modulo 2 is 1. So 5 divided by 2, we get a quotient of 2 and a remainder of 1. So 2 goes into 5 twice. 2 times 2, that's 4. And 5 minus 4, that's 1. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And to get the last digit from our number, we can use modulo 10. Okay, and this will be 3. 123 divided by 10, it will be 12, and the remainder will be 3. Okay, good. So if, having this done, uh, then our, our next order of business would be how can we move on to the next digit? So this is again something we used in the previous video. So to get the, the next digit, we can divide the number by 10. So 123 divided by 10, this will be 12. Because we're using integers, we won't get anything for the point decimal values. Okay, so 123 divided by 10 will just be 12. Okay, so that's how we move on to the next digit. We could already start to shape out our own little algorithm. So the first thing to do, get the last digit from the input number. Then we would add the digit to a new number. And then we would divide the input number by 10. Okay? To move on to the next digit, just to be clear. Okay, so these could be our main steps get the last digit, add the digit to a new number, and divide the input number by 10 to move on to the next digit. Okay, so I hope it makes sense so far. We could start implementing this in code and see how it goes. So let's start setting this up include standardio.h, then our main function here we would have for example int number and int reverse which will be our reverse number and we will initialize that to zero so we can work with it okay so let's prompt the user for the number and f please Provide the number to be reversed. New line, semicolon. We scan for it and we pass it to number. Okay. So, and we'd want to do this as long as number is equal to zero. So, we'd make sure that we don't get zero. Okay. So, we can actually get something that we can work on. While number equals to zero. Okay. So how can we proceed now? Now basically we would need to loop for our number. 
and the operations we perform on it so while number is different than zero so while our number isn't zero we would want to keep looping and run our operations on it okay but one one more thing we need to take into consideration is for example as long as the number isn't zero so we will we will have another iteration then we will add another digit so how can we can we add another digit next next to our number so we wouldn't want to actually add it onto it we actually want to add it to the next unit so for example we would want to keep like the decimal numbers and the hundreds numbers and so on okay the tenth the hundreds the thousands and so on okay so if you think about it so for example if we run this the first time we would get so 123 modulo 10 we would get 3 and adding that to the new number we have 3 okay then we divide 123 by 10 we get 12 and then once we do 12 modulo 10 this will be 2 okay so if we have 3 how do we how can we add 2 next to it so we, we basically need to create the space for it how can we do that we can multiply 3 by 10 okay so 3 times 10 equals to 30 and then 30 plus 2 and the plus here equals 32 okay so this will actually add 2 next to the 3 so to say okay so i hope this makes sense so basically as long as we loop through the number we actually want to multiply the the new number by 10 before we do anything else so we can have like the room the space for the new digit to add on okay so reversed equals reverse times 10 so this is the first thing we will do each time of course the first time reverse will be zero so this won't, won't even matter and after this we add number modulo 10 so the last digit we add it on and then number equals number divided by 10 okay so this is how we will get the next digit on okay here we can use like a shorthand like you would use plus equals or anything like that and we can just use divided equals by 10 okay so i hope this makes sense so while while the number is different than zero we will multiply our reverse number by 10 so we would create the space for the next digit then we would add on the last digit from the input number and or what would be left uh, what would be left of it after each iteration and then we proceed to divide the number by 10 again okay so on, on, until it's zero then we will stop okay so we can print this out the reverse number is we we'll have an integer here and we'll pass in reverse okay so, so I hope this is okay. Let's give it a go. Let's spawn a terminal. I use the GCC compiler. I'll put this to a file called reverse. So it seems to compile fine. Let's test it. Reverse. Let's first test zero. So we make sure that we get prompted again, and that's what happens. One, two, three. Okay, so it seems to be working fine. So we get three to one. Let's run some more examples. Five, five, four, three to one. Okay. And one more. For example, minus four, three, two, one. Minus one, two, three, four. Okay. So in case you're wondering about the positive or negative sign, this will basically work out fine as well. Because, go back here for a second. If we have, for example, minus 123 modulo 10, the result will be minus 3. Okay? So having minus that, so having minus 3 in the reverse number, the next time we will have minus 12 modulo 10, the remainder will be minus 2. So this will be times 10, it will be minus 30 actually. And when we add 
minus 2, this will be accurate, and we will have minus 32. Okay, so it uh, doesn't matter if we'll have a positive or a negative number, the, the value will be correct. Okay, so this should be it. I hope this was as fun for you as it was for me. And if you found this interesting in any way, please give the video a like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to your comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around.